morning. My name is Freddie Drennan. I'm a data scientist with Digital First Media, and I'm going to do a quick overview on how to build out a plumber API and then load balance it. Um, quick caveat, I have dogs in the background. Um, if you've heard any of my videos before, it, it is what it is, um, but they play. So um, what I would suggest doing is go to my GitHub, fork this repository here, this plumber API repository, and put it locally on your computer. Um, you don't necessarily have to do that for this, but it would make things easier and you'll have a template. Um, whenever you're building out an R package, you usually have all of your functions in this in this um, folder here, this R folder. Um, this is just the, the default, uh, you know, uh, repo, or not repo, the package that the R will build for you on, on startup. Uh, what we have here is our plumber file. This is what is actually going to get run um, for, for that API. You'd put any packages that you need to run up here, and then and then here's all the endpoints. Um, so this isn't necessarily a tutorial on how to use Plumber or how to build out a server on AWS, although we are going to do that. Um, this is just to get you up and running and load balanced. So uh, I, I built out this function, wait. It is going to, whenever you hit the endpoint, it's going to sleep for two seconds, and it's going to say, hey, we slept. So this is going to be able to, to let me prove to you that we have uh, effectively load balanced that endpoint. Um, because we're going to hit um, we're going to hit the load balanced endpoint, then we're going to hit an individual endpoint, and then see the difference in performance. So we're going to start by building out an EC2 server. Um, we're going to go ahead and launch an instance. I'm using Ubuntu Server 16.04. It would probably work on 18.04. I just haven't tried it out. I'm going to do a medium box. We're going to hit next configure instant details. We're going to skip. We're going to add storage. And then we're going to do about 20 gigs. I like at least 20. You can do whatever you want. Um, next, we're going to add tags. Uh, and also with the storage, just remember you have to... Um, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Go back to storage. Previous, previous. Um, you'd have to pay a little bit um, for, for storage space. It's not a lot, you can look it up. Okay, next add tags, next configure security group. I'm opening this up to all traffic. Uh, don't do this uh, if you care about security. If you do care about security, then you can open up just the ports that we need. I think it's just gonna be 80 and then uh, 8,000 to 8,010. Um, but this is just to get it up and running. Uh, I would suggest you just do anywhere at all traffic. Uh, and then once we are, um, once we're done and, and happy, you can go back and change things because you can just trash this server after you're done setting it up for the first time. Okay, we're going to review and launch. Uh, launch, you're going to need to set up a key pair. Uh, I already have one, so that's what we're going to do. My dog is drinking water. It's very loud. All right, a few instances. So uh, I'm not wasting any time here. I just want to get it up and running, have you get it up and running, and then you can go back and figure it all out. Getting it up and running is the hard part. Figuring out how it got up and running is, is much easier whenever you have all the steps to go back and look at. Uh, so I'm just waiting to be able to, to click on this thing here and get it going. Um, this is an old server that I was using. I need to shut it off. All right, so I'm going to terminate this old one. Don't do this with your one that's running. All right, um, first thing, you're going to want this public IP address. So copy that, put it somewhere. I'm going to put it in the um, right at the beginning of this markdown file that is in the repo um, for, for me to use. Uh, but if you've cloned this and put this on your computer, then you can do the same. All right, so let's connect. So I'm going to copy this after hitting connect, open up my terminal, and then boom, we're in the console. Yes. Pow. All right. So we're on the AWS EC2 server. I'm going to change the password for me because I just like to have a password. We're going to make sure that Git is installed, and it is. Next, we're going to apt update and install nginx. This is what's going to do our load balancing. We're going to say allow HTTP and now 
lo and behold, let's take this um, value here. We should be able to hit it. There's Nginx. All right, successful. Next, we will get Docker going. All right. I'm just stepping down, going through these steps, copy paste. I've already done the work for you. All right, get update. Hit our ID stuff. Oh, hit, hit Y. Got it. Hit dash Y there. All right. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, that was the last one we ran. So now we will give Docker pseudo privileges. And then we need to install Docker Compose because that's what's going to, we're going to create a Docker file for one endpoint, but then we're going to route it to, to multiple different ones. Um, okay, at this point, exit out and then log back in. Uh, this is because you can't do Docker Container LS and oh, Docker Container LS. You can't run Docker without sudo until you exit and, and you know, reconnect after running that command. Uh, we don't we, we don't want Docker Docker sudo we don't have to run sudo Docker stuff. All right, all right. So um, I am cloning the repository because it's mine. Um, but wh wherever you've you've done that, you know, get into your um, your uh, your own repo and, and clone it there. Um, so that's what I'm going to do now. So now we have the Plumber API template repo. Um, so here is where I am. I am in home Ubuntu. Uh, if you're doing this on AWS, it should be the same. So you should just be able to say home Ubuntu Plumber API, go into the miscellaneous folder, and then get that Nginx configuration file. All right, so here, this is where we need to replace all of this stuff with your actual public IP address that you copied down earlier. Bum, bum, bum. So this is telling Nginx, you know, whenever you hit um, hit port 80, send it to one of these places. Um, if anyone has more effective ways of building out these, um, these, you know, like load balanced endpoints, I am totally down for being schooled on that stuff. Okay. Server name. This is where we're going. So it's going to list on I80. Whenever you hit this, it's going to, to route to one of these spots over here. Done. All right. And assuming that you're doing this on AWS, you should just be able to say, okay, copy where that exact file path is um, to where the configuration file should be. And then restart. Okay, cool. All right, next we will go into the miscellaneous file uh, folder and we can build our Docker file, but let's just look at that Docker file real quick. Quack, real quick. Um, so we see we're, we're taking from the Threshold Tech um, plumber Docker, Docker container. And then we're gonna run a couple more R libraries that I personally like to have whenever I'm doing R stuff. Uh, this will install um, our Java, uh, at least get it configured for you. Um, and then uh, if you're using a, a private repo, uh, this is always nice because whenever you're actually like running your your um, um, your API, a lot of the time you have you know, it, it's based on the package that you built. So this will install the package that that plumber file uses or that is, it, it needs. Um, and then you need DevTools in order to be able to run that. So if you need to like install tidyverse and run r-e and then just replace this with tidyverse or add a new line. All right, so um, next we will build out our Docker file. So you do this in the same folder that this Docker file exists. Um, quick note, um, you see two plumber files here. You see the one in plumber 
which is the one that you would develop with. But whenever you're actually ready to deploy it, copy that plumber file into the miscellaneous. So I already um, I already did that, but if you wanted to like update and have new functions, then you need to make sure that it gets into this plumber R file, um, the one that we're actually going to use. Um, so next, we're going to Docker build the Docker file. This will take a minute, so just watch my screen and um, or you know like scroll ahead once this all stops, and then once it stops, then. Um, you know, I'll, I'll keep jumping on, or we'll, we'll keep going, but this is going to take, this takes a minute. There's no such thing as a perfect writer. This is why I use Grammarly to check.
it off. All right, Docker file's been built. Um, the, the only other thing is just to, to show you, there's this docker-compose.yaml file. So this has all of the different endpoints that we're gonna build out. So um, we're gonna use the Docker file. We're going to, um, to put that um, file into app plumber R. Here, here's the ports. So we're gonna route from inside the Docker container to 8,000, inside the Docker container to 8,001. So um, at the, you know, for, for this IP address here, um, all, you know, we're gonna be able to hit 8,002 and hit app three. And um, for the nginx.conf file, make sure that for however many apps you have, you're routing to an endpoint. So it ends at 810, it ends at 810 here. All right, so docker compose up dash d, dash d means detach. Everything's running successfully. Um, find, uh, find this application called Siege. It will um, allow you to hit an endpoint and see how well it's doing. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit um, a, an individual endpoint. We're gonna hit 8003 uh, for 10 seconds. And uh, after that, we're gonna we're gonna see how well our load balanced API does whenever we hit the uh, just the the port eighty. All right. So locally, let's see. So we're gonna hit it with 25, uh, 25 computers because we're hitting one endpoint and it takes about two seconds at a time. Um, wow. Okay. So we only got four hits, but because we've load balanced our API. Look at that. Look at that performance. Oh, that's great. All right, 40 hits. So that makes sense. Uh, we hit it for about 10 seconds. Um, you know, each one of those endpoints um, can only take so much at a time, but uh, significant improvement. I haven't done any sort of like testing to figure out um, you know, like on a T2 medium, what's the best amount of APIs or like what, what, you know, how many apps should we run at once and, and load balance over? So maybe you get better performance for five because the computer can only take up, you know, can only do so much. Or maybe if we just like tripled this to 30, you know, maybe that would work better. Um, so the, the, the actual number is probably, um, you know, depends on what, um, type of service you're running, you know, what, what's it doing on the inside? Is it uh, an application that needs a whole lot of memory or is it something that spits out an answer really quick? Um, but anyways, that is it. Um, if you followed all those steps, then you have uh, something to go off of. All right. Have a great day.